105 Radio. And a very good morning for me, Julian Clover. I'm at the Hills Road Memorial in Cambridge for the annual ceremony of remembrance. It's actually the 100th year uh, of this particular ceremony and first held in the years after the Great War. Uh, this morning we'll bring you music from the Scholar Cantorum of King's College School, uh, also Water Beach Brass, a number of guests to bring you as well. Uh, just uh, seeing Richard from Water Beach Brass just uh, going into uh, the Mills and Reeve building, which is uh, next door uh, to our broadcast position. For those of you uh, who need to know where we are, we're at the bottom of uh, Station Road, just outside of the Cambridge University Botanic Gardens and uh, crowd beginning to gather. Already we have, uh, just behind me here, I don't know if you can see, uh, around about a dozen or so uh, Vespa riders, uh, regular attendees of the Ceremony of Remembrance. Uh, the parade will start at about half past ten and then after that at uh, ten to, around about ten to eleven the service will begin and that's going to uh, be uh, handled by Devon McLachlan, uh, who is from Great St Mary's Church here in Cambridge. It's actually a second uh, ceremony which is uh, taking place uh, in town uh, this morning. That one is uh, going to be taking place at Great St Mary's itself. Uh, here we'll have the Mayor of Cambridge, Councillor uh, Mark Ash, and his deputy, Jenny Wood. Uh, she is at Great St Mary's this morning. And uh, after the service completes here, a uh, number of dignitaries are going to be laying wreaths on the uh, war memorial. Um, it's uh, made, for those who don't know, made of limestone in part. And uh, the str on top of uh, the memorial itself, we've got uh, the homecoming, uh, which is this wonderful shot of uh, the soldier who's looking uh, towards Cambridge Station for his comrades who are never to return. Uh, seats uh, in front of me, empty at the moment. They've been filled with the choir over the last uh, little while who've been uh, rehearsing, uh, sounding really, really good, alongside Water Beach Brass as well. And uh, we'll hear from them. We expect they're practising, actually, to get underway, uh, possibly at about uh, 20, past, 20 past 10, I think, when that's going to happen. Uh, the <laughs> I'm noticing out of the corner of my eye a couple of... Uh, uh, scooter riders are going past on a road which I think has been closed over the last uh, couple of minutes or so. But I do see a bus waiting there, uh, number three, on its way to Cherry Hinton. So perhaps maybe that won't, uh, uh, that will probably make its way through. But after that, the roads here are going to uh, be, be shut and uh, that will allow the uh, ceremony to take place. Now, I'm going to try and bring in a couple of guests, if I, uh, if I can now, from uh, Water Beach Brass. Gentlemen, if you'd like to, uh, uh, to come over, we've got uh, two Davids for you. Uh, David Minchin, who is in charge uh, of Water Beach Brass, also along him, another side him, another David. Uh, David Euphonium, you wanted us to call him. Yeah, it works <laughs> for me. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, look, tell me, tell me a little bit, bit about Water Beach Brass and uh, how, how long uh, it has been a thing. Oh, that's a good question. Do you know when it started, Dave? I, I when, do. Well, I, um, I knew you'd know. Because, because it's, uh, I'll give it away, it's the year of my birth, so um, r recent, of course. <laughs> uh, no, no, we were founded in 1978. Um, so we've been around however many years that is now, 44, I think. And, and how many of you are actually from Water Beach? I'm, I'm guessing that you sort of um, attract people who are interested in playing from you know, several miles around. I don't know if you call you a village or a town these days. Yeah, good question. So I think we've probably got maybe only one or two people in the band actually who live in Water Beach at the moment. Um, we're very fortunate that we attract players from, I mean, all, all around the area. Um, I think our furthest player, I think, lives in Sandy in Bedfordshire. So um, people do travel some distance to, to play with the band and, and, and uh, you know, take part in their passion. Because mm. there are other uh, brass bands around. I think, David, you're involved also with one in, in Haverhill as well. Oh, yes. Yeah, so we're very fortunate in this area. We've got lots of brass bands. I play in Haverhill Band, which is just over the border in Suffolk, of course. Um, and uh, they're close to where I live in Soham. There's a brass band. There's one in Wicked and Newmarket. It's a danger. I'm going to miss a lot of bands out here, but we I'm are fortunate. I'm wondering, is, is East Anglia, one, one thinks of the north as being the place for all the brass bands. 
Netherlands, but it sounds like East Anglia was something of a hotbed for them as well. I, I think in, in the days of uh, working on the fields, having a, having a brass band 100 years ago was quite a nice thing to have. But of course, there's a lot of the Salvation Army tradition as well, so that's where a lot of brass bands have, have come from, a lot of players. But yes, yeah, so there's quite a few bands in, in East Anglia and very locally, so that's excellent for us. Tell me about the music that we're going to be hearing today. Yes, well today um, being Remembrance, of course we've chosen music um, for the occasion. The band are going to be playing some numbers uh, as we await the procession coming up and we're going to be doing Elgar's Nimrod. Um, we're then doing a brass band piece of music called Country Scene, which is nice and mellow and we thought suited the mood. Um, and that will probably be enough, although we have got Jerusalem in there should we need to play a little bit more. Are you, are you also accompanying the, the Scholar Cantorum of, of King's College as well? We are. We're there, we're there doing two, two hymns. In fact, uh, James Randall is going to be conducting uh, them, so I'll step aside so he'll conduct the band and, uh, and uh, the singers uh, for that. And then we've got uh, O Magnum Mysterium um, in the, when the wreaths are being laid, and that's just the brass band. And then we'll finish off with uh, the March Slade Burns. So that'll come right at the end of the service when everybody's... Uh, dissipating to finish okay. so that's our program and, and I'm just wondering if you know is it the first time that you've played with a scholar cantor is it just coming coming in on a on a Sunday morning having to get something so important so right so quickly no <laughs> <laughs> what well, well, it is for me I mean of course uh, brass bands we, we do things with many different uh, organizations in fact I think uh, in May we've got a concert with the the Welsh male voice choir from London haven't we so uh, we do lots of uh, things uh, with uh, with voices and other groups but this is the first time we've we've sung with the, the young ladies who sung beautifully this morning we had a little rehearsal um, and it sounded fantastic it's so sounding, we're looking forward to it sounding really good so we're looking forward to hearing them later on David tell me about the euphonium because it's not necessarily a, a, shall we say a, an instrument that one would instantly want to think about playing How, what led you to it that's a good question. So, um, uh, cards on the table, I, I started off as, as a trumpet player um, many, many years ago now. Uh, and my, my very good teacher at the time basically noticed that I was struggling to get the high notes, uh, essentially. And said, um, you know, how do you feel about trying an instrument with a larger mouthpiece that would suit my, my, my mouth shape, my embouchure better? Uh, so I, I did that. I, I tried, uh, tried a larger instrument and uh, was converted immediately. I found it so much easier. Uh, and I've you know, been playing euphonium now more, more years than I care to remember uh, and I, I love it um, I think it's a, a beautiful sounding instrument uh, in the it's right hand. It's not very portable though is it? Not, not hugely, <laughs> um, it's, it's rather nice to play because you get to cuddle it which is, which is um, lovely um, so you, uh, the name euphonium means sweet voiced and uh, I think it's got a, a lovely sound, a lovely rich sonorous sound I like to describe it as the brass band equivalent of the cello I have to mention, you're, you're sporting two medals uh, this morning on, on your uh, rather smart blue jacket, if I might say so. T tell me about those. So um, that's from, from uh, another activity of mine that I did some years ago. Uh, I used to be a member of uh, Cambridgeshire Special Constabulary. Uh, so there are a couple of medals that I was uh, awarded during, during my time serving with, uh, with the police force. OK, well, look, David and David, thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, this pleasure. morning. Um, I, I guess you'll be reuniting with the rest of the band shortly and we'll be hearing uh, hearing you a little later, later we on. We will indeed. We're assembling in about about quarter past ten and then we'll play about twenty past ten and uh, I think they're just having a little coffee before they go on and play. Possibly, so, uh, possibly need, need to, uh, to, to get uh, get them going and uh, make, making sure they're in full blow for, late, for later on. Absolutely. We had a lovely breakfast this morning, didn't we, we have to say, Very provided nice. by... Who provided it by Dave? Uh, Mills and Reeves solicitors have looked after us very well, so thank you very much uh, for, for feeding us and your generous hospitality. I have to say they are very good each year, and I think the staff coming in especially to open up the uh, uh, the building on, uh, on, yeah. on a Sunday, for not just for Water Beach Brass, but also for uh, for some of the veterans as well. Yes. So, uh, gentlemen, thank you very much. Well, thank uh, you very much. Indeed. We are speaking to uh, James Randall shortly. Uh, James is going to be uh, conducting... Uh, the Scholar Cantorum of uh, King's College. Just pop the microphone down there, that'll be just fine. Thank you very much, uh, David. Uh, crowd's starting to build a little bit. Some um, uh, military uh, people are here, I notice. Um, Major Stephen Shepperson, who is uh, masterminding uh, the uh, parade and the service today. 
and uh, he's uh, just uh, talking to uh, a few colleagues, making sure that everything is uh, correct. David is taking uh, his place with the, uh, his euphonium alongside uh, uh, his uh, colleague David uh, Minchin. Uh, but now I'm pleased to say I'm joined by uh, James Randall and uh, uh, James with the Scholar Cantorum of, uh, of King's College. You're very welcome, James. Tell us a little bit uh, about the choir. Julian, thank you. Yes, um, I'm James Randall. I'm the Director of Music at King's College School here in Cambridge. And um, today we've brought with us the 19 girls of the Schola Cantorum, who are our girls' chamber choir at King's College School. Um, the, the girls are made up from um, girls in year six, seven and eight. Now, I always school. get confused, despite being married to a teacher, I always get confused as to years six, seven, eight. So how, how, what sort of age ranges are we looking at So we're, we're, we're looking at girls um, aged nine, ten, eleven and, 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 and twelve. And they're a, a great group of girls. We, we rehearse together in, in one way or another daily. On a Monday, they um, have music theory classes, ensembles and orchestras. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, we have um, rehearsals during the school day t together to, to prepare music and to just really enjoy making music together and teaching them how to sing together um, as part of what is their, their education at King's College School. It's just a part of what we do at King's. Which is, and it's not often we get to say this, particularly about King's, it's a relatively new school, I think, as well. Um, the, 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 the school at King's can, can trace its roots back to the, the foundation of, of the college. This is a, a new choir that was set up in 2020 at King's. So it was much in the planning before the pandemic struck. And indeed, we, we came back from that first national lockdown and auditioned the first girls in September 2020 to join the choir. And when I think back now to, to how things were then, um, the, the girls had to be in their year group bubbles and we had to be two metres apart. So launching a brand new choir, um, it was an interesting time to do it, but I'm so pleased that we did, because actually having learnt to sing further apart from each other, coming to sing outside today, that they're actually quite used to having a distance in their sound. And then a term in, um, we of course all went back into to lockdown, and I kept the choir rehearsing over Zoom, um, which was a really great opportunity to get under the bonnet with them of, of quite a lot of exciting music over Zoom and remotely, and we learnt so much together during that time. When we then came back together and we were all in the room and I put a chord down on the piano and they sang a piece together that they'd rehearsed on Zoom whilst they were muted and they came and, and sang it together the first time, I, I will admit there were, there were tears in my eyes and I was quite choked up actually that what we had all been through um, across the world but then to bring these girls back together and to hear them singing in, in the room I don't think I'll ever forget that. Uh, sounds, and a beautiful sound uh, this morning during, uh, during rehearsal and I was amazed as we were testing our, our speakers here so that the, uh, the, the crowd gathered around uh, the Cambridge War Memorial can, can hear, um, not the choir, but well, hear the choir but specifically some of the uh, some of the readers later on and the speakers went on the speakers went off and they just kept going we're not not I'm completely flawless that, that's very very kind of you to have, have, have noted that they, they they've they've worked very hard to prepare for today we haven't spent lots and lots of time on it because I, I don't believe that things should be over re rehearsed that there needs to be something of the moment in a performance but what we did do um, over the past two days is just practice singing outside and it was rather wonderful as they were standing outside at school singing um, the, the music that they're going to, to offer as part of the service today. It was really wonderful to see younger children come and, and watch and, and, and listen. And I, th I think we can be fairly sure that the, the future generations of girls wanting to join this choir are, are lining up already. I do, I do hope so. I, I'm very sure they are. Tell me about the, some of the music pieces that we're going to be hearing this morning. Well, the, the, the two pieces that I've um, chosen in consultation um, with my colleagues who have, have put together to today's service. Um, the first is a, a setting of They Shall Grow Not Old as We That Are Left Gold. It's a very, very simple setting um, and it's one I remember from my my own school days uh, my own school director of music used to stand and sing it from the organ loft um, during during the remembrance ceremony and I thought it was the perfect piece for today its simplicity captured by youthful voices perhaps reminds us a bit of the huge sacrifices that were made by so many so that we really could enjoy our todays and that the next generation and the generation after that could use their voices so I chose um, Mike Sams's version of They Shall Grow Not Old for that reason. The second piece I've chosen um, is a setting attributed to J.S. Bach, um, that, that great musician that's towered over 
over, over music for, for so many years. And it's his um, attributed to him setting of Abide With Me, Then Will I Fear Not, The Journey Into That Distant Land. And I, I chose this because I think it's so important at this time, as well as remembering what happened when so many people went and, and offered themselves in, in war to defend and to promote what was good, that we really do remember what they must have had to think about when in the war was over and it was time to come home. What were they coming home to? What, what, what was it? What was the unknown at home? Because they'd been away. It's and interesting. You, you mention uh, rehearsing the choir over, over Zoom and one thinks of the changes that society went through some more temporary and I suspect you know the changes will fade away over time but we notice changes but those changes would have been nothing compared to the soldiers the servicemen returning home after after the war the great war and then the second world war and to be honest many other conflicts that this this country has uh, found itself participating in yeah. and I, th I think this setting of the bark that we're singing it, it as well as a, the emotion of, of, of the people who were going off to war, it, it really does capture, and if you, if you all listen carefully to, to what the girls sing in the second half of the piece, those emotions of when they were on the boat coming home, where were their loved ones? What would their homes be like? The cities they'd grown up in, what would they look like? So we wanted to capture something of that and to also, you know, w what we're teaching in a choir it's so much more than music, it's life skills as well and I think it's really important that these children really do understand what today is about from, from, from all angles and music education can do that, it can set the child a, a light to understand things. And as a, as a child uh, within the choir, what, what happens next as, you, as, as they get older, you know, they, they, they move, well, move, they'll they, move schools, but yes. how do they maintain their, their musicality well, through as, that? As they grow older, yes, they do move schools, and that's a great sadness to us. We are a preparatory school. We are preparing children for the next step. And, of course, the, the wonderful thing is that we, we, we plant very, very strong roots with the, the children in our care that have been entrusted to us. And what we want to do is we want to see them go off to wherever the next place for them, the, the right place for them to go to is, but we want to see them flourish. And perhaps one of the, the greatest things for us um, who are entrusted with the education of children is when you hear from them later on and you see the person that they have grown into and, 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 and what they have, have become. And it's always a great joy to hear from former pupils who, who get back in touch and say, here I am, do you remember me? This is what I'm doing now and I'm still singing that song. Yeah, that, that's kind of what you need, uh, you, you need yeah. to hear. Well, look, James, thank you so much for your time uh, this morning. We're very much looking forward uh, to hearing the the choir singing uh, thank you. as uh, as part of the, the, the service, but uh, thank you, thank you very much. Thank indeed. you, so James Randall, uh, who will be um, are seeing if you're watching our YouTube video feed. Uh, James uh, will be uh, conducting uh, the Scholar Cantorum of King's College School uh, this morning. Uh, just before I bring in my uh, my next guest, I'm looking around the corner to see if he's on his way. Uh, just uh, setting the scene for you here. We've got a group of uh, uh, police, not too many, don't normally need, well, I guess with so many military around, you don't really need too much of a police presence. Uh, but about four police officers in uh, day glow uh, jackets there. Um, Major Shepherson just uh, keeping an eye on things, uh, looking through uh, Water Beach brass, brass band at the moment and I can see Devon McLachlan who's going to be leading the service uh, this morning he's uh, having a chat with uh, uh, some of the attendees crowds are beginning to gather around us at uh, at this at this point um, on the other side of the road we're on the side closest to the Botanic Gardens uh, on the other side, and of course, the uh, smoke works, the restaurants there, the barbers. I'm trying to remember, there's an empty shop, and I'm trying for the life of me remember what it was. I think it was possibly uh, a cafe this, uh, this time last year. Um, seeing a local photographer who is uh, here, I think, uh, yeah, from the uh, Keith Heppel uh, from Cambridge Independent, will be taking some pictures that no doubt you'll see on uh, their website. Also, I actually see a photographer from the Cambridge News as well. I can't quite remember his name off the top of my, top of my head. Um, but uh, they're all um, getting ready to take some uh, some 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 pictures 
uh, of uh, which you'll see in your um, in your papers and on your on your websites in due course. It's across the way there. I'm seeing uh, Daniel Zeichner, MP for Cambridge, is going to be amongst those uh, laying a wreath a little uh, a little later on. Uh, Major Shepperson is coming his in, in this direction. Good morning, Major. How are you? How are you? Uh, very well, thank you very much. You come in here because we're, we're doing a bit of it. Just now, just if stand on this side of me over here, okay. we would be, be very good because um, uh, we're on and this way and uh, sorry, doing some doing some video as well. So we kind of have to be in, have to be in shot for those watching on YouTube. Um, how are things? going oh they're going really to plan today the weather's been very kind to us we've got a really good turnout and uh, i think it'll be a really good parade today to mark it obviously the, the 100th anniversary of the war memorial it's going to be a splendid day and this um uh, lady here is responsible for the poppy panels i would like to come in madam and just a little bit closer over here and um i don't know if we can get a shot in a moment of the uh, of the poppies uh, themselves but tell, tell me a little bit about them our wa village war memorial in Water Beach and the one in Land Beach actually had their centenaries la uh, two years ago during lockdown and it wasn't possible to acknowledge them. But the two parish churches, the ba plus the Baptist Church, the Salvation Army and um, other community groups, a lot of the uniformed groups and the schools, all contributed poppies and a kind donor gave us the camouflage netting and that is what you see this morning those are two of the four panels we created last year the other two this morning are outside land beach parish church of all saints and they too are finally acknowledging the centenary of the war memorial and all this meant to those communities we worked out that in the villages, very often, somebody would have known someone who was bereaved, who lost a loved one or a friend. Because, because that's that something it would have been a very close-knit so community, exactly, much more than today. Exactly. But we have to underestimate that here, the colleges often lost up to 25% of their <laughs> membership, it, particularly in World War I. So it seems very appropriate for me, as one of the official tourist guides for the city, to um, be contributing here and remembering there. Well, it looks very splendid. I mentioned Keith Happel from the Cambridge Independent and his colleague over there from the Cambridge News. I'm sure that is uh, something they'll be taking uh, uh, pictures of and hopefully our, our coverage on, uh, on YouTube this morning uh, will also be able to capture them. They look really beautiful on either side of the gates of the Botanic Garden, um, just behind the War Memorial. But well, thank you so much uh, for coming okay. to join us. I think I might have missed your name at the beginning. Was Angela Brown. Angela Brown. Well, thank you very much indeed, Angela, uh, for thank joining us on Cambridge you. 105 Radio. Well, thank you for inviting me to speak. Uh, you're, you. you're, you're, very, you're very welcome indeed. So Angela Brown telling us about uh, uh, the, uh, the, the War Memorial uh, and that poppy decoration that she's done uh, today. Now, it's uh, Cambridge 105 Radio, we're live from the Cambridge War Memorial, and I'm very pleased uh, to introduce uh, my next guest uh, to you. If it, uh, a video camera here, so if we could uh, um, face uh, Norman towards that, that would be really good. And would you be able to hold, hold the microphone for him? Norman, you're very welcome on Cambridge 105 Radio. This is Norman Summers who is a, uh, a veteran of, um, and look, Norman, I, I, tell us a little bit about, about yourself. Royal Engineers. Yes. And uh, when and where did you serve? North, North Africa, Italy, and Vienna, yeah. That's quite a stretch and a, and a long way. I, I, I gather that uh, you were born not in Cambridge, but in, in, in Bath, and then uh, came, came across to Horningsea, is that right? I was stationed at Quay in 19, 1940, was it? I think, yeah. Mm. And at those, those times, do you, I don't know, how, how clearly do you, do you remember them? A lot. Got good memory. Yeah. And I, I, I gather, uh, uh, it's always dangerous asking people their age, but I think for, for this it's particularly relevant. Would you mind telling everyone how old you are now? 101. That is fantastic, and I gather, I, uh, are you still sort of out and about on your motorised scooter, which I yes, heard about? Yes, I go on the market nearly every day. Wow. And the, the, the girls that run it there, 
Shelley and Sarah, they're fantastic. That's that's that that that's wonderful. And uh, you, by the looks of things, you're, you're keeping in pretty good health as well. Well, not too bad, am I? No, not not not, not too bad at all. Well, look, Norman, thank you very much for popping by just to see us this morning. Really, really good. And my army number. Oh yeah, go on. Two one five one three five two. I tell you so, I can barely remember my own telephone number, so that is, uh, that is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Norman, thank you very much Bye -bye. Uh, indeed. Thanks for joining us. Um, Norman Summers, everyone. Let's listen to the sound of, I think this is Nimrod, uh, by the Water Beach Brass. Beach Brass conducted uh, by David Minchin as people are continuing to gather. I must mention my colleague Neil Whiteside. Neil, come on over and have a grab the microphone here. Um, you're looking remarkably smart. Well, I was going to say, everybody is this morning. It's amazing. It's, uh, yes, yes, I'm, I'm in uh, several capacities today, but today I'm here as the president of the Rotary Club of Cambridge. Now, this is the wreath. Now, how does, how does this work? Are you going to be lined up by... Yes. Uh, by our military friends here. Yes, they, so they all, all the people, all the service personnel will go first, and then uh, community groups and organisations will follow in later. So you're in the groups of threes, presumably, which presumably normally, so. normally normally come in. Well, the, the good news is, at least I'll be able to identify you, so I'll, I'll know who exactly uh, exactly who you are. Just uh, mentioned, just breaking away briefly, the uh, uh, mayor of Cambridge, Councillor Mark Ashton, just uh, walking by here, along with the. Uh, Lady Mayoress as well, and uh, I think uh, Councillor Ashton is going to be first uh, to lay lay a reef uh, when the uh, reef laying ceremony starts. That's after the the service. I'm trying to think. Probably around about ten past, quarter past uh, eleven is mm. probably uh, uh, when that's going to uh, to take place. So the the reef itself it, is is this one because some of them I hear get get used every year. No, this is brand it's new brand every new. brand new every year from us. So uh, and, and it's it's all money into the Royal British Legion. Of course, we bought we purchased them from the Royal is British Legion. Is that how Legion. that works? Yeah. Now that's so, interesting. Yeah. So because money's we know gone the, into their the pot. poppy sails and the, the the pin badges that we're both sporting this morning um, add so much funds this absolutely. presumably adds just that little bit little bit it more does. to go in it there does. we're absolutely delighted always every year to do this and of course I've driven down from Norwich to do this this morning for me I've never attended uh, a, Memo a Remembrance Sunday in this sort of capacity my father was in World War II uh, and my grandfather was in World War One. so for me it's great it's lovely yeah. to be here today. It's, it it's interesting that the family connection, really, that so many, yeah. so many people have, thinking back to, well, another age, really, isn't it? And if we think of it, this is the 100th anniversary yeah. of Remembrance commemorations in Cambridge. We just, uh, I just heard from our guest Angela that actually uh, Water Beach beat us to it by a year in having the, uh, in, in, in having the first one in, uh, in 1921. But uh, in 2022, commemorating the uh, 100th anniversary, Indeed. so your uh, so your your task will be to to, to lay lay this. Do you know who you're paired with? Yet? No, or not yet. We'll find out in a moment. On. So I suppose I'd better go and pay attention. But it's uh, well done as always. It's a wonderful. I was listening on the way in. It's always wonderful coverage from Cambridge 105 Radio, and I'm not just saying that as a member of staff. It's, it's the, always it's so professionally done. It's the right answer. Yeah. Uh, thank you very <laughs> I'll much. See you Neil. later. Uh, Neil Whiteside, Cambridge 105 radio presenter, who's uh, here today in his capacity as president of the uh, Cambridge Rotary Club. Um, the inevitable bicycles are now being pushed through um, despite the road closures. We will see at some point during the course of the service there will be a lone cyclist who's less desperate to, uh, to find their way through. Thank you. 
introduce you now to uh, my next guest, who is the Reverend Devon McLachlan, who's going to be leading the service uh, for us today. But you're from Great St Mary's Christian Church, but it's a multi-faith service. What, what, what does that mean? It's very important at a time like this that we work to recognize and celebrate the diversity of the city that Cambridge is and the diversity that has been in the British Armed Forces for many, many years as well. So we'll have representatives this year from Roman Catholic communities, um, from the Cambridge Central Mosque, from University Jewish Chaplaincy and celebrating that great diversity that makes Cambridge so special. Now the service I believe is going to, if you like, start with um, a reading from, from one of your colleagues before the, the main service uh, gets underway. That's right. So Rabbi Ben Baruch will be um, reading from Torah just before the service officially begins and it's a lovely way to, to get us prepared for this time of remembrance. It is one of those services, isn't it, where, yeah, the music might vary just ever so slightly, but, but rather like Christmas or like Easter, we know that we know the order. We 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 know what's going to happen. Yes, and that's I mean, it's it's part of the honor and the responsibility of being you know the established church as an American. It took me a while to get used to it, and then I realized there's a real pastoral role for a community to say, here's what faith says in the face of death and sadness, and here is our dependable, commonly held way of coming together as a people and in prayer and in remembrance. I need to ask you this, actually. I don't think I ever have, actually, at least not uh, not on the radio. How, how does an American from Chicago uh, end up at Great St. Mary's Church? Uh, you know, I'm still trying to figure that out many years down the road. It was a surprise to me as well. But it's such a it's such a wonderful community, and what a what a gift to be um, a part of what brings Cambridge together as a city. But yes, as an American, every so often um, I scratch my head and think. They really do mean this, don't they? Yeah, I think we poss possibly do. Look, I better let you go because no doubt the, uh, you'll need to do some, some final, uh, final preparations. Before I do though, tell me about the lectern because it's, it's not any old lectern that uh, the readings will be taking place from. No, that's right. The lectern um, dates back to the First World War and belongs to Great St. Mary's. It was built for a field hospital um, um, run by the 55th, who also ran the Eastern General Hospital that was built on the backs here in Cambridge. So it was built by Cambridge medical officers serving in France and then who brought it back from France at the end of the Great War and gave it to the University Church. And it's nice to bring that full circle again back to Cambridge and back to this remembrance service. Well, Devon, thank you very much uh, indeed for, for joining us on, on Cambridge 105 Radio this morning. We'll be uh, hearing your words a little later on. Thank you, Julian. Take care. God bless. Uh, Devon McLachlan of Great St Mary's uh, Church there, who, as I mentioned, will be leading uh, the service. We'll get underway, I guess, around about uh, 10 to 11. Uh, before then, at any moment now, we are waiting for the arrival uh, of the parade and uh, the various uh, folks involved in that lined up uh, on either side of Station Road. In fact, I think I can hear uh, something in the distance now. We've got to listen out for the pipes of uh, Russ McPherson, Councillor Russ McPherson, who this time last year, ah, right on cue, uh, this time last year, uh, Councillor McPherson was mayor of the city. Uh, through the, ah, he's halfway through the, what became a, a two-year term for him. Councillor McPherson uh, leading uh, the assembled masses of the uh, parade down Station Road, just uh, approaching now the uh, the traffic lights and actually the original site of where the war memorial was. It was moved back uh, a few uh, years ago now. It's a 
parade walks up Hills Road. Uh, in front of me, coming in the other direction, we have uh, the choir just uh, taking uh, their places, splendidly dressed uh, in purple blazers this morning. Uh, James Randall leading them, as we spoke to a moment or two ago. Uh, the parade goes up really as far as the Earl of Derby pub, then turn around, come back, and uh, form up in front of us here uh, outside the War Memorial. A number of organisations are taking part in the parade. I'm going to miss some, I know, but amongst them, uh, members of the Royal Navy, the Royal Marines, the 254th Medical Regiment, also looking out for Cambridge Fire Service, the Cambridge Sea Cadets, the Cherry Hinton Army Cadets, Cambridge Police are represented as well. The parade uh, walking just, just in front of me now, level with our broadcast position and our outside broadcast van. Uh, also seeing uh, members of St John's Ambulance, uh, the Cambridge here, the Royal British Legion of course, and the Fire Brigade. Various sets uh, of scouts and cubs and beavers uh, from right the way across uh, Cambridge here are here uh, this morning. And members of the military, as you might expect, in, in full military dress. Brought to a standstill here. show the length of the parade there are still some uh, marching through whilst others have reached their destination I stand in front of the war memorial there are the flags of which I'm seeing on standards really which I'm seeing about about a dozen or so and Councillor McPherson who's uh, dressed in some rather fetching white boots along with uh, Tartan and holding his bagpipes that you heard him playing just a few moments ago. Norman Summers, our veteran, who we uh, spoke to just uh, just a few minutes back, his, um, in his uh, wheelchair, which is uh, uh, being supported by a fellow serviceman just standing in front of the memorial there. At the top. Turning to face us now, right in front of me, a couple of members of St John's Ambulance. Hopefully, their services won't be needed today. Certainly, not too cold, or warm if anything. Moving into position, checking that they're level. Arms length apart. And to the front. So a couple of members of St John's Ambulance also seeing uh, the Cambridgeshire Scouts and Cubs. Green jumpers for the Cubs. And all the Beavers are in blue. Can't quite see any of those at the moment. Young military cadets walk behind the memorial, taking their place. Numbers of the crowd here really swollen over the past 10, 15 minutes when we arrived here, uh, of course, around about 9 o'clock. Uh, we uh, virtually empty other than the seats of the uh, taken by the Water Beach Brass and the Scholar Cantorm of King's College. 
now though, pavements are full. The road, of course, Hills Road, has been closed. Keith Hairport taking some pictures there. I mentioned you'll probably see those in the Cambridge Independent in due course. Just quiet and silence. Just some gentle respects. A little bit of activity behind some people still going about their business, an inevitable cycle uh, which you would see around Cambridge. Conversation going on there between uh, uh, Keith Heppel, the photographer, and Maynard Shepherson. He's obviously uh, looking and uh, making sure that the photograph he wants to see uh, is uh, the one that appears in this week's paper and on the website. A number of people holding wreaths ready. Of course, anybody can, uh, can lay a wreath here uh, once the main, and many do, uh, once the main service has been completed. Dog yapping in the in the background. <laughs> Timing is all very important, of course. The uh, the two minutes silence, which will be observed at eleven o'clock, has to be spot on, really. Avoiding any sort of alarms and sort of modern noises uh, from phones and the like. Immediately in front of me we've got the Water Beach Brass uh, emblazoned, as I mentioned a little earlier on, in their, in their blue blazers and uh, the purple of the Scholar Cantorum of King's College School and Water Beach Brass lined up in front of the Botanic Gardens that we mentioned uh, when we were speaking to Angela Brown, uh, this uh, poppy uh, montage on either side, uh, two parts. Uh, uh, she told us on either side of the main gate, on the main gate, uh, there's a larger uh, red poppy. The other side of the War Memorial and uh, the Botanic Garden, the, uh, uh, one of the offices of Apple Computer, and uh, people have gathered up there uh, using the vantage point of the steps so they can uh, uh, get a better view of, uh, of what's, what's happening. I'm on the other side of it, so I've, uh, as, as usual, I brought my trusty photographer's steps with me so I can uh, tell you uh, when the reefs are being laid, because otherwise with the, uh, the crowds, the, the size that they are, there's a reasonable chance I might not necessarily be able to, uh, to, to spot who's there. <laughs> Veterans, young and old, are, are lined up along with uh, the future, the, uh, the cadets. I think we'll be from 104th uh, Squadron uh, who, who are stationed here. Some people as well outside of the Mills and Reeve building who uh, look after uh, everyone as they've done for, for, for many years. Uh, uh, now the big glass building uh, you'll be familiar with, sort of a slightly green tinge. In fact, the windows is like a, a, a green stripe uh, on between every, every couple of, uh, of windows, which makes up the fascia of the building. Minimal police presence uh, here as, uh, well... I guess it's only military people, you don't really need it, but uh, if anything else, it's to uh, uh, just make sure the, uh, the road closure stays closed and uh, no, no uh, vehicles or anybody else attempts to get through uh, during the course uh, of, the, of the service. Normally, I think we'd probably expect uh, the roads to uh, reopen again, I think, by around about a quarter to twelve. 
is looking across the way there. I can see uh, Councillor Mark Ashton, Mayor of Cambridge. Uh, somebody in between, I can't quite make out. Uh, Daniel Zeichner, uh, Labour MP for Cambridge. Easily spot Daniel because he's very tall. And in front of them, as I mentioned, uh, Norman Summers and uh, next to uh, Norman Major Shepherson, also heard from him uh, on our broadcast a little earlier on. I should mention, if you are listening to us uh, on the radio, or perhaps your smart speaker, you can also see pictures uh, of the event. We're broadcasting uh, on our website via YouTube. If you go to cambridge105.co.uk and follow the link that you see there. A longer than normal pause uh, taking place. I'm wondering if perhaps the parade started just maybe a tiny bit earlier uh, than it often does, uh, which is uh, leading to this uh, little break uh, before the service uh, gets underway. Certainly at the moment the, uh, the lectern, which is placed, uh, well, as, as I'm seeing, I'm behind the memorial, so uh, on... On my right, uh, left, as the veterans uh, lined up with their standards in front of it, are seeing it. It's uh, uh, an officer right next door uh, to the lectern. I'm expecting um, that to be approached in a, in a few moments' time. The service uh, will get underway. I've got a moment. I uh, should have mentioned Cambridge Piano Forte, uh, who are responsible for uh, providing the keyboards uh, which you'll hear. It's, uh, the portability of uh, such devices is very, very useful. So that's uh, been uh, brought down from Cambridge Piano Forte's place in King's Hedges uh, for us this morning. Uh, Rob, one of our engineers, or perhaps Dom, uh, would have connected that up. So. Uh, uh, the speakers uh, around uh, the war, war memorial here and uh, also of course for those of you uh, listening at home this morning today's event of course uh, commemorates the contribution of british and commonwealth military and civilian servicemen and women in two world wars and later conflicts it's an opportunity not just to honour their service, but also to commit ourselves to work for reconciliation and for peace. And obviously, with events in Ukraine uh, in the front of our minds, um, we I strive for peace more than ever at this time. Now, it looks as if things are about to get underway uh, with the service. I'm uh, Rabbi Ben Baruch. I'm the University Jewish Chaplain for Cambridge in East Anglia. Um, and I'm going to do a reading of Psalm 23 in honor of all of those who served for including my grandfather, who's 97, he served in the Royal Navy, and all those who unfortunately lost their lives. Mizmor le David, Adonai roi lo echsar bin ot deshe yarbiteni, amem unuchot ina haleni. Nafshi yu shovev yoncheni b'maag leitze leklama an shemo. Gam ki elech begeitz al mavet lo irara ki ata imadi. Shif techa umish antecha heme yonach amoni. Taroch lefanai shulchan neged sovarai, Dishanta Vashem and Roshi, Kosira Vaya. Achto Vachesed, your Dufuni, Koyame Chayai, Vashavti, Bevet Adonai Lor Yamim. A psalm of David God is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You set the table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup is filled to overflowing. 
May goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and may I live in the house of, the, of God forevermore. And that was Rabbi Ben Barak. Uh, I will shortly now hand over to the presiding minister for the commemoration this morning. That's the Reverend Devon McLachlan, Associate Vicar of Great St. Mary's, of course, uh, the University Church. And uh, Reverend McLachlan is now approaching the lectern. His Majesty's Deputy Lieutenant, Mr. Mayor, Honourable Daniel Zeichner, MP of Cambridge, esteemed guests, friends, colleagues, neighbours, members of the armed services, cadets, emergency services, and others. Welcome to this Remembrance Sunday service, commemorating the contribution of British and Commonwealth military and civilian servicemen and women in the two world wars and later conflicts. We are come here together to honour their service and to commit ourselves to work for reconciliation and peace. We are delighted as well to have other representatives of civic authorities and of the university, including the Pro Vice Chancellor of the University of Cambridge. As well, very glad to have Water Beach Brass back at this service and the Schola Cantorum of King's College School. So a delight to have them sing and lead us in reflection and in music. My name is Devon McLaughlin. I'm the Associate Vicar at the University Church. I'm also the Diocese of Ely's Officer for Interfaith Work. Very glad to have Rabbi Ben Baruch, who read from the Psalms just now, and Imam Zakaria Gangat from Cambridge Central Mosque, who will offer a reading during, later during the service, as well as the Vicar of St. Paul's, on whose patch we are here in Cambridge. The lectern that we are reading from goes back to the First World War and was built by the chapel of the number 55th, Cambridge, who built the General Hospital, both the Eastern General Hospital here on the backs and a hospital in France at which this lectern was used. And so we honor their memory particularly and are glad to bring that full circle. There are a number of other anniversaries this year. It is the 100th anniversary of Remembrance Services here in Great Britain, not the 100th anniversary of the Armistice. I may be American, but I know that much. But it is the 100th anniversary of Britain setting aside a time every year to remember the fallen. We also have amongst us someone a little bit older who was already one year old at that first remembrance service, and that is Norman Summer, who is 101 years old and who served in the armed forces for many years. Norman, it is an honor to have you with us and as part of the wreath-laying community. Thank you very much, Norman, for your service, for your presence here. There are orders of service available for those joining us further away. As you know, Remembrance Day has very specific timings. We're not just doing this to see if any of the cadets will pass out while I talk. One other thanks, which I forgot before we begin our gathering prayer, which is to thank Mills and Reeve for their hospitality, to thank Cambridge 105 for their sound system and for broadcasting today's service, to thank Cambridge Piano Forte for providing the piano being used at today's service, and an enormous debt of gratitude to Major Stephen Shepperson from the 254th Medical Regiment who helped bring this service together to our wreath marshal, Brian Jackson, and to Penny Wilkinson and members of, um, Penny McDonald and members of City Council who've made this service possible. Thank you all so very much. Many other folks who I also could include in those thanks.
what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. My sisters and brothers, neighbors from far and near, we meet in the presence of God. We commit ourselves to work in penitence and faith for reconciliation between the nations, that all people may, together, live in freedom, justice, and peace. We pray for all who in bereavement, disability, and pain continue to suffer the consequences of fighting and terror. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in world wars and conflicts past and present have been given and taken away. We gather to remember them. We gather as a community from far and near. And we pray that we might have grace to honor their sacrifice by working for peace, by working for justice, for reconciliation. Our service continues with the act of remembering and then the two-minute silence that follows the last post. I might remind some of our guests, this is a good time to check your mobile phones. His Majesty's Deputy Lieutenant will now begin the act of remembering. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them.
ever-living God. We remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war and to the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Now, Imam Zakaria Gangat of Cambridge Central Mosque will offer the first reading. Good morning. May peace and blessings be upon you. As we honor those that have sacrificed and departed, may we work towards love and peace. I will recite a few verses from the Quran and I will share its meaning with you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Adameen Arrahmanirrahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in Ihdina as-sirat al-mustaqim Sirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين. We begin in the name of God, the infinitely good, the all merciful. Praise be to God, the Lord of the worlds, the infinitely good, the all-merciful, owner of the day of judgment. Thee we worship, and thee we ask for help. Guide us upon the straight path, the path of those on whom is thy grace, not those who deserve anger, nor those who go astray. Amen. Thank you. And now, Andrei from Cambridge University Ukrainian Society will offer a reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Good 
Good morning. I will read uh, this gospel in memory of those who died in all wars, including the one that is currently going in my country. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Thank you, Andre. I invite you now to join with Water Beach Brass and the Schola Cantorum in singing, O God, our help in ages past. Now the Reverend Imogen Day, Vicar of St. Paul's, Cambridge, leads us in praying together. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace. For those who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God, and for those who mourn. Lord of peace, hear our prayer. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, 
for their family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return. Lord of peace, hear our prayer. For all whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, including civilians and refugees, and that we might repent of anger and hatred. Lord of peace, hear our prayer. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free, and for all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, Lord of peace, hear our prayer. God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose name we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray even for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. You're invited to join me in saying the Lord's Prayer in whichever language is most familiar to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We sing, Abide with me.
Now the reef laying gets uh, underway. Uh, first uh, to lay the wreath is uh, uh, Roger Herriot, the uh, uh, Deputy uh, Lieutenant of Cambridgeshire, uh, followed uh, closely by Mayor of Cambridge, uh, Councillor uh, Mark Ashton, just, uh, leaning down, placing uh, his uh, wreath there as the music of uh, Water Beach Brass uh, commences once more. Uh, being conducted by David Minchin here. Now representing the University of Cambridge, we've got the Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Laurie Butler Law. some familiar faces of some of the uh, veterans who have served their country uh, now living in Cambridge uh, some born here of course others um, drifted in over time as some of us do There's some familiar figures so many of them uh, really will have served I one put a thought in the uh, conflicts in the 1950s, perhaps into the 1960s as well. Spoke earlier, of course, to Norman Summers, at 101 years old, was with the Royal Engineers, uh, served in Italy and Algeria. I'm sure that he'll be uh, joining the party and laying his own tribute in the next few minutes or so. Wreath Marshall normally sends people through in uh, groups of threes uh, to lay their wreath and then they return uh, to their place, mostly gathered uh, on to the left of the War Memorial. We imagine I'm on the right in the War Memorial uh, in the centre at the bottom of Station Road. Political leaders as well uh, making their tributes. Uh, Daniel Seichner, who is the uh, Labour MP for Cambridge, I think alongside him that's Alice Smith, the leader of Cambridge City Council. Representatives now of Cambridgeshire Police. I know that uh, the officers are around us uh, here today, being looked after uh, by Jim Stevenson. A group from the Air Force, I think this will be. touching over on the far side, the opposite side of the road, uh, next to Hills Barbers. We've got a group of firemen who are here today. Uh, they have placed uh, their helmets on the ground, the yellow helmets on the ground beside their feet, hands behind their back, looking towards the memorial. Cambridge 105 radio colleague Neil Whiteside is here today in his capacity as president of Cambridge Rotary Club. He's now laying uh, his wreath uh, alongside a colleague, uh, both bowing and again uh, returning 
uh, to that spot uh, where everybody is lined up either waiting to or having just laid their wreaths in honour of the fallen. some of the others laying reefs uh, this morning councillor stephen ferguson who is the chair of cambridgeshire county council chief constable nick dean of cambridgeshire constabulary and the parade sergeant major is paul scott colonel jason herring the vice commander of the 100th air refueling wing and uh, representing um, the american armed forces this morning colonel brian filler who is the commander of the 501st uh, Combat Support Wing of the United States Air Force, and uh, I believe he is based out of Milton Hall. A naval cadet there just uh, laid his wreath as uh, Devon McLaughlin returns to uh, the lectern. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. So with grateful hearts, let us commit ourselves to responsible living and faithful service, that in our lives we too might honour the fallen. Will you strive for all that makes for peace? Will you seek to heal the wounds of war? Will you work for a just future for all humanity? Merciful one, we offer to you the fears in us that have not yet been cast out by love. May we accept the hope you have placed in the hearts of all people and live lives of justice, courage, and mercy, strengthened by your love. Amen.
God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the king, the commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty be with you all and remain with you always. Amen. The standards are raised uh, once more. The uh, parade and uh, uh, preparing to uh, depart. First of all, we see uh, the Mayor of Cambridge, uh, Councillor Mark Ashton, departing uh, alongside uh, the Deputy Lieutenant, Roger Herriot, and uh, with some uh, cadets following behind. They're just heading up uh, Station Road past the Smokeworks restaurant now and uh, the, the other branch of the, uh, the Norfolk Street Bakery. Being uh, followed out by uh, some other, other cadets. Cantorum of King's College also leaving. James Randall leading them through. The girls in their uh, very, very purple blazers. Heading into the Mills and Reeve building behind us. Aloft, the uh, parade is uh, starting to move uh, down Hills Road. They're going to turn around in a moment or two. And right now, they're heading in the uh, direction of Lensfield Road. It's turning now, turning, I would say, around about level with the Apple Building and uh, turning around in front of Hills Barbers. Members, as we saw earlier, the Royal Navy, the Royal Marines, uh, the 254th Medical Regiment, uh, Cambridge Fire Service, Cambridge Sea Cadets, uh, the 18th Cambridge Scouts, uh, Cherry Hinton Army Cadets, uh, Cambridge Police, uh, the 104 Air Cadets, uh, St John's Ambulance Youth, and of course members too of the Cambridge Royal British Legion. One group marching towards Lensfield Road. They turn around and they, they see on the other side uh, coming back those who've gone before and some members of uh, St John's Ambulance, uh, getting a couple of members uh, using wheelchairs this morning. Uh, the scouts following them and I know some members of the City Council events team who have helped uh, make sure this all goes very smoothly indeed. Uh, flawless as ever, uh, combination of the City Council and the uh, uh, Royal British Legion. And our first attempt of the morning of a bicycle to try to get through. Oh, interesting. Parade comprising of some 
uh, Cub Scouts, also I think some beavers in there as well, uh, making their way past Smokeworks uh, Restaurant. And uh, last, uh, bringing up the rear and just saluting there, our friend Norman Summer, 101 years old, uh, served in the Royal Engineers in the Second World War in Italy and Algeria. You might have had our conversation with Norman later on. The uh, crowd uh, breaks out into applause here. I'll just keep an eye on Water Beach Brass to see if they are going to uh, play one more number for us. Yes, trying to decide. <laughs> Russ McPherson there with his uh, kilt, his bagpipes, his scarf. I'm seeing the instruments are being put down, which seems to uh, suggest that uh, we've heard... Oh, no, maybe not. Hang on. Certainly the conductor, David Minchin, is, is still at his uh, podium, this is possibly gathering up uh, his papers before they uh, depart there. Uh, over the other side, some of the uh, dignitaries, Daniel Zeichner, is uh, having a chat with Devin McLaughlin, who conducted the service for us today. Hello, Mr. Rotary. Neil Whiteside is here again. That, that all worked out? That did. That was very good and a uh, great honour. Really, yeah. Who, who was your companion? Uh, she was a lady from, and I haven't got my glasses on, but she was from that organisation there. <laughs> that is Plaskud and Skeets. Is that an organisation? Yes, local, local organisation, I think. Local organisation. And, and I've also got bookmarks and everything from them as well. So, yes, it was yeah, very nice. OK, no, well done. That's it. That's it. I'm back home and into my jeans now. I'll see you back on two, tomorrow, 12 till 2. Bye-bye. <laughs> Neil Whiteside, I've said we don't, um, it's not that Cambridge 105 radio presenters get to uh, lay wreaths, it's Neil in his capacity as uh, the president of Cambridge Rotary Club. Uh, the crowd is just beginning to uh, disperse, a few conversations, the road is still shut uh, at the moment, it will remain so for a while, but I know the uh, uh, police, that Jim Stevenson might be there, just uh, uh, checking that things are of okay and uh, preparing to open the road once more in a, in a short while's time. I've on my way in it was a little bit confusing. They already had the signs up and I was slightly worried I was going to have to uh, double back and park somewhere else but uh, pleased to say that wasn't, uh, wasn't the case and I managed to uh, get through parking as a number of us have uh, behind uh, Mills and Reeves thanks to uh, uh, their generosity, not just for the parking really but providing refreshments uh, for those uh, participating in today's service. Didn't need shelter this year, actually it's uh, quite warm, uh, for certainly for a November, uh, November day. I don't know if you can hear the sound there. I, I mention these guys every, every year. They have about a dozen or so uh, Vespa riders who uh, I think uh, many of them are, are veterans and they, uh, they come over to, uh, to pay uh, their respects. Now is the time, by the way, when individuals can come up to the War Memorial and lay their own tributes, those people outside of uh, the, the, main, the main parties. Now, whilst we've been speaking to you, of course, at the Cenotaph in London, poignant occasion there for the new king, as the first time uh, King Charles has led the country in commemorating those who have lost their life since he came to the throne just uh, two months ago and a really sort of strange feeling really uh, standing here outside the Cambridge War Memorial and uh, hearing God Save the King sung for the first time as of course it would have been 100 years ago uh, on the very first Remembrance Sunday at uh, the Cambridge War Memorial. Something else I should mention to you with, uh, from the terraces coming up at one o'clock this afternoon with Tim Armitage. Four members of the armed forces uh, took charge of yesterday's League One game between Cambridge and Bolton uh, on Remembrance Weekend. Referee Darren Drysdale was an RAF sergeant and his assistants Declan O'Shea and Steve Finch, corporal and captain respectively in the British Army. And the fourth official, uh, Scott Jackson, was a chief or is a chief petty officer 
in the Royal Navy. We were hoping to have a word with them, but apparently there's a there's a rule which is imposed by the Football Association, which basically means you can't speak to match officials about anything uh, before a game. So that was a, a bit of a shame, but uh, uh, great to see the armed forces represented at Cambridge United uh, yesterday afternoon. All pretty much um, starting to um, disappear here, so we're going to wrap up our uh, our coverage in uh, a few moments uh, time. I uh, should mention after the news at 12 o'clock, it's a bookmark special show uh, today on publishing, and Lee Chambers' featured guest is John B. Thompson, uh, talking about book wars, the digital uh, revolution in publishing, his exploration of the effect of the rise of technology on the publishing industry. Uh, also hearing from best-selling author A.J. Campbell and why she decided to self-publish. And Cathy Moore, who's director of the Cambridge Literary Festival, is going to be chatting about the upcoming festival and why face-to-face -face events uh, with authors remain extremely popular. Uh, my thanks to our engineers, Rob Chipperfield and Dom Smith, our production assistant, Sophie Brown. Uh, this is Julian Clover from the Cambridge War Memorial. A very good morning.